This is Selma Schimmel for the Group Room at ASCO, the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Now we welcome Dr. Gretchen Kimmick, Thank who you. is Associate Professor at uh, the Duke University School of Medicine. You're going to talk to us about your work in the area of short and long-term cardiovascular complications related to cancer treatment. We were planning the patient and survivor care educational sessions this year and you know, in thinking about the topics that were important to patients and to me in my practice, um, more research has been done lately on uh, cardiac outcomes for patients, not only long-term but short-term. Um, so I thought it would be good since I'm recognizing it and recognizing the importance of cardiac issues for patients um, to go into the subject for practicing oncologists so that we can educate people about management of blood pressure because um, a lot of our medicines that we give cause hypertension and that increases risk of heart problems and other um, cardiovascular uh, diseases like stroke. So um, I'm hoping that we're covered tomorrow in this session um, all the things um, important for practicing physicians. When we look at women uh, bre breast cancer survivors and looking at issues related to treatment that could have cardiovascular uh, mm -hmm. consequences. Are women or men more at risk related to their cancer treatment if they are already predisposed to cardiac issues? The whole topic is, is being clarified in research. I don't think we know that so much, but we do know that Hypertension, for instance, puts people at higher risk for um, heart failure after cancer. Um, I think what I was thinking about when putting the symposium together was just the fact that we need to recognize things and oncologists need to know more about treating blood pressure or when to refer patients who have low ejection fractions after they've gotten anthracyclines or Herceptin. So, um, you know, I believe that, that women probably are more at risk for um, cardiovascular toxicities from chemotherapy, um, but we're still clarifying a lot about those things. Are there key questions that an oncologist needs to ask a patient as they evaluate them, not just their cancer status, mm. but taking into consideration cardiovascular issues? We get into family history of cancer, uh, you know, now that we know that there are genetic predispositions to breast cancer and ovarian cancer and a lot of other cancers, um, we ask all about the genetic predispositions for things that increase the risk of having the gene. Um, we probably need to pay more attention to family history of hypertension and heart disease and other things that we can point out that they can be working with an internist on. What are the key message points that we can tell viewers now what they need to know about the discussion they may need to initiate with oh, their yeah. physician and what's their takeaway message about staying on top of their um, cardiovascular care. Having a good relationship with your doctors, key. Um, and then the doctors realizing you know what they're comfortable with and what they're not. In an ideal world, a patient has an oncologist who takes care of their cancer and hopefully their oncologist, if they see something else, will refer them to someone else. Um, or refer them back to their primary care doctor who also has a very close relationship with that person. Um, that, that's the ideal. Uh, whether or not we can get there for every single person, that's the problem. So just recognizing what your resources are within each institution or region of the country uh, is important too. We had done some uh, work with a group of researchers and they were pointing out to the women in the audience that one doesn't have to necessarily go through the cost of, you know, let's say a cardiac CT and all of that. These things are expose yeah. you to more radiation, they're right. expensive. Something as simple as a carotid ultrasound right. are simple things that one can also do to right. evaluate their status. This you're talking about primary care. So um, atherosclerosis is what the cardiac CT and the carotid ultrasound pick up. And although, you know, increasing metabolic syndrome after treatment for cancer, say with the steroids we use and that kind of things is an issue, and that predisposes to cardiovascular disease, 
when we're talking about side effects of medicine, like increasing blood pressure, those are reversible things, or cardiomyopathy, which is actually a direct toxic effect on the heart muscle and not on the blood vessel. So those are different. Um, cardi uh, this cardiac CT and the um, carotid ultrasounds are going to pick up things that we're predisposed to get anyway, uh, based on family histories and things. So they pick up atherosclerotic changes. Um, and the cardiac CT, you know, I'm not a cardiologist, and we have a cardiologist coming to our session tomorrow, but that's not approved or paid for by insurance. So it's one of those things that's kind of maybe not the things that we should all be seeking out. We all want to do things to help our health, guarantee that we're not going to have a heart attack or get cancer. When you really come down to it, there's so many things we don't have control over, so it's a matter of handling it and finding it early, right? Um, so yeah, doing those preventive things that have been proven to improve outcome, decrease stroke risk, um, decrease risk of heart attack and death from heart attack, those kinds of things like treating hypertension and um, keeping your cholesterol in good shape and exercising and keeping your weight under good control, those kinds of things. And know your family yeah. history. And know how important it is that you pay attention to your family history and then realizing that it's changeable. I mean, I always think about, um, you know, the pe people we know in our daily lives. Um, you know, we knew that cholesterol increased risk of uh, stroke and death for years and decades. And the people whose cholesterol is lower and who exercise, they live longer. So now we see people like controlling those things and actually outliving many of their relatives. Well, I want to thank you for taking time to look at this important area of short and long-term cardiovascular complications related to cancer treatment. Dr. Gretchen Kimmick, Associate Professor, Duke University School of Medicine, Breast Medical Oncologist. Thank you so much. Thank you.